Awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, welcome to Model, the Model Weekly. This is the webinar series hosted by the team at 12 Ops. And you know, we've been meeting uh, on a weekly basis every Friday uh, over the past one year or so. Um, here's some of the topics that we tend to cover on a weekly basis. Uh, research in multimodal AI and partition models, in innovative application of multimodal in the different verticals. Uh, since our company focuses a lot on video understanding, where people come and talk about uh, the you know, interesting, exciting video multimodal projects that they are working on. And uh, we also have partners and internal employees sharing tutorials and guides on how to use our platform and APIs. In some of the recent session, we, we have, uh, I think we uh, been focused a lot more on the research side, like with folks talking about, you know, um, foundation models, challenges, uh, video recognition tasks, um, multimodal intelligence, video question answering, um, and, and so much more. Um, so for today's session, I want to shift back into the the partner and um, tutorials guys sort of thing. So we have uh, Ronit Opera, currently the VP of New Product and Strategy at Philo, and he will, will give a presentation um, called um, Exploring Visual Insights from Social Data with Philo and 12 Labs. Uh, so Philo, um, I mean, he can talk more about the details, but um, they in a startup that uh, enable, you know, uh, users to um, get a lot of insights, right, from social media data. And we announced a um, partnership um, integration of, of content marketing like a, a few months ago. So I'm excited to, um, you know, have Roy here and talk about um, the special details of that partnership. Uh, yeah, so uh, for the uh, participants, feel free to send your questions on the Zoom chat and um, since we only have one speaker today, uh, you can just put the question on, on the chat and then, you know, uh, I'll let Rohit um, answer that um, as he finished the, the talk. With that, I will stop sharing my screen and I, yeah, unmute you. And um, yeah, let me go ahead and start your presentation. Great, I'm seeing the screen. Perfect. Um, thank you, James. Uh, happy Friday, everyone. Um, thank you for turning up uh, on, you know, a Friday afternoon. Uh, over the course of next 30 to 40 minutes, I'm going to try and you know, kind of talk about uh, Pillow and the integration that we've uh, done with 12 Labs. Um, and hopefully, you know, we're going to take back uh, a learning or two from the session uh, that I'm conducting. Uh, my name is Ronit. I look at new product strategy uh, here at Philo. Uh, what it essentially means is that I, you know, kind of keep tinkering with um, existing products that we have uh, and, you know, kind of try out to figure out new use cases uh, that we can fulfill from our existing products. Um, in my role, I also, you know, kind of uh, lies with external partners uh, and try and figure out if there is, you know, synergies that we can establish with uh, both of uh, our products put together in conjunction, right? Uh, Coming to the firm that I work for, uh, Philo essentially is an infrastructure layer for social data. Uh, what we uh, essentially want to, you know, kind of um, do is be that one-stop provider where you can get access to any kind of data. Our customers today access um, a whole multitude of profile metadata as well as content data from across platforms. Uh, for them, you know, the... Uh, solution becomes fairly easy because they get, you know, a single API where uh, they can access data across platforms. Uh, and this pipeline can be turned and uh, turned on and turned off dependent on their use case, right? And um, we actually cover a multitude of social platforms. Uh, uh, by far, I think if I count, it's about 24 odd social platforms that we cover. So um, if you need data, uh, which is, you know, related to a content or even related to profile across all these 24 platforms, we are that one stop solution for you. Uh, our customers majorly use us because um, we, you know, kind of help them focus on their core uh, while all this non-core stuff uh, around, you know, kind of establishing connection with social platforms and then also maintaining the regular compliance becomes our headache. Uh, they just, you know, need to, you know, kind of connect with our APIs uh, and then, you know, they're good to go. Um, while, you know, we have got um, a bunch of products. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, kind of bring in focus, uh, majorly three products, um, you know, that would fairly be relevant for today's conversation. Um, 
First is the content fetch API that essentially allows you to fetch um, a, a, a content or a, or, a, or a list of content that is associated with a particular profile. Uh, we help you, you know, kind of get access to the specific media URL, the comments, as well as profile metadata. We have a social listening API, which essentially, you know, kind of uh, searches the entire internet for a specific keyword hashtag or a mention um, that you, you know, kind of provide. Uh, this is essentially available across six plus platforms. And what you can do is you can, you know, kind of build a cache of content. Um, and this cache of content is going to be dependent on the specific keyword or the hashtag that you've used. Um, for example, I could, you know, kind of say, hey, um, I want to, you know, kind of build insights on top of, let's say, a brand called Zara. Uh, and then, you know, kind of give Zara as an input. Uh, and our APIs will go and, you know, kind of scourge the entire internet and try and, you know, kind of fetch all the content pieces that have Zara as a metadata, um, you know, associated with them. And finally, we have creator search APIs, which, you know, kind of uh, help uh, brands and agencies across the globe get access to 400 million plus creators. Uh, and not only, you know, do we get you access to these creators, we also help you, you know, kind of go a level deeper and get you profile analytics with an influencer that help you decide whether a particular person is uh, suited for your next campaign or not. Uh, we have, you know, kind of, because of the nature of our offerings, have had a very horizontal um, use cases uh, being served. Uh, we currently, you know, kind of work uh, actively in four domains. Uh, uh, this e-commerce where we, you know, kind of help gatekeep ambassador programs. Uh, you'd have seen, you know, a lot of programs like, let's say, a Walmart creator or an Amazon influencer program. All of these programs require a certain amount of eligibility for you to be able to participate in that program, right? So we essentially go ahead and, you know, kind of help companies like Amazon and Walmart gatekeep uh, access to such programs. Uh, and then we also, you know, kind of help a creator, you know, kind of build their profile on the storefront uh, that they've established. We've, you know, kind of seen massive success in influencer marketing where, you know, we kind of help with uh, influencer discovery, campaign management, and then also, you know, kind of helping track the actual buck a person is making from the campaign spend. Uh, we've had decent success in dating where uh, an individual's persona can be built dependent on his interest, liking, dislikings, and then you can use that logic to, you know, kind of decide uh, who to pair him or her with. Uh, and then we have financial services where you can, you know, kind of uh, build alternate credit scorecards uh, dependent on a particular individual's social presence. Um, you could, you know, kind of also determine whether a particular individual is an actual person or a fraud um, based on, you know, his social presence and the activities that he's done. Uh, so that's just, you know, uh, us uh, primarily, you know, major three reasons we have seen people, you know, kind of use us is a, you know, you're able to incorporate uh, social data in your workflows uh, while accelerating go to market. Uh, and, you know, because we are doing all the heavy lifting for you, you end up, you know, kind of saving a lot of uh, money, which can be then directed towards your core effort. Uh, so that's just, you know, a quick introduction to Philo. Uh, I'll probably jump on to, you know, kind of talk about uh, what the philo plus 12 labs integration results into right and that's a searchable social platform uh but probably you know a couple of you would say hey the you know social platforms are by nature searchable right uh, i go to youtube and then you know i kind of search uh let's say uh, a clipping about the latest olympics event that's happening and i'll get a result right uh but the problem that happens there is that when you search on a social platform today the results that you get are because of the profile or the content metadata, right? So I could, you know, kind of um, search for Zara and in return, get a video of a chimpanzee uh, dancing on CR's cheap thrills, right? But the social media platform has, you know, kind of given me that, has shown me that result rather because somewhere Zara has been associated in that content's metadata, right? Essentially, a Philo plus 12 Labs integration allows us to search the video itself and ensure that we're getting the right results and the right insights. Uh, incrementally, what a, what a 
integration like this does is that it allows you to, you know, kind of start getting insights from video. And in current uh, situation where, you know, uh, the likes of Snap, Instagram have seen massive increase uh, and then both of them are natively, you know, image and video first. Uh, integration this uh, like this would allow you to, you know, kind of search the internet and draw insights that accurately describe the current situation. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, just um, uh, try and, you know, kind of show you how an integration like this works. Um, perfect. And I'm just going to move this around. Okay. So what I've done is I've, you know, kind of tried to, you know, kind of build a visualization, um, a very hacky visualization at that uh, to, you know, kind of describe how the solution uh, would work. Uh, what I've done is I've tried to, you know, kind of um, search for a specific keyword, which is Zara. Uh, but you could, you know, kind of use a specific keyword. You could use a hashtag or you could also use a mention, right? Uh, so if I had to illustrate, I could say, hey, search for Zara, which is a keyword. Or I could say, hey, search for hashtag Zara. Or I could say, hey, search for at the rate Zara, right? Which becomes a mention. The moment I click on fetch videos, what the system essentially does is it starts, you know, kind of um, searching the internet um, and, you know, kind of try and find all the content items that are associated with this keyword. For the demo, what I've done is I've tried to, you know, kind of just uh, look at Instagram. So uh, we've, you know, kind of gone to Instagram, our EPS have gone to the Instagram, looked at, you know, content that is associated um, Zara as a keyword in the metadata. We've downloaded that and then we have, you know, kind of go ahead, gone ahead and created an index and I'll just open up 12 labs and you can see that, you know, um, there are indexes that have been created, right? Uh, all these indexes have been created because of the integration. So in case, you know, you use uh, the running integration between Philo and 12 labs, you don't need to manually go onto the social media platforms and, you know, download a bunch of videos and then come back and upload all of this content. Onto, uh, onto 12 labs, you can just, you know, kind of use a specific keyword or a hashtag and say, hey, I want content around this particular, uh, you know, uh, content keyword. And we will go ahead and, you know, kind of fetch the content and make it available for you within the 12 labs flag playground, right? And this is just for illustration in whatever workflows that you're building, you can go ahead and also, you, you know, kind of um, build that integration within your own product as well. Um, heading back to the product, now I can, you know, kind of uh, put a search query. In this case, I'll say, um, let's say people wearing Zara clothes and I'll click on search. What it will do is it will, you know, kind of uh, use the 12 labs capabilities to, you know, kind of run through all the videos and it's given me a result. Uh, I can click on uh, play the video segment and what it has done is it's, you know, kind of fetched that specific snippet from the entire social data and said, hey, here is, you know, someone wearing Zara clothes. So, so that's just a classic example of, you know, how you can make uh, a fellow and a 12 labs integration come to life. Uh, I've had uh, probably, you know, kind of took up another use case um, that generally I've seen a lot of people, you know, kind of talk about. Now, uh, essentially what happens is that, you know, uh, we were just talking about keywords, hashtags, and mentions. There's also a lot of times, you know, trends that pick up on social platforms, right? Um, there was one time when, you know, ice bucket challenge was a huge thing across the internet, right? And you had uh, anyone and everyone from the likes of, let's say, a Barack Obama um, to, to, to you know, your local um, uh, shop owner, you know, kind of trying to, you know, kind of create video around that. So what we can also do is we can help you, you know, kind of do a search where you could, you know, kind of identify a trend and give us that specific trend. And we are going to, you know, kind of collect and create a cache of videos that specifically get associated with that particular trend. In this case, I just, you know, kind of try to search, get ready with me. And what our APIs have done is that, you know, they have read all the internet, came back with, you know, specific content items, which are more around the trend of get ready with me and you know these are all bunch of videos that you can see
so so that's another ability that we have where you can you know kind of search a specific uh, you know kind of content keyword or you can you know kind of also search for specific trends uh, now i could you know kind of incrementally use 12 labs apis to search for specific insights right i could say hey uh, how many influencers used uh, zara products in the last 7 months or in the last seven weeks, and I could, you know, kind of come with definitive numbers, which is well, you know, kind of jump back uh, to the presentation where I wanted to, you know, kind of take uh, and talk about, take you and, you know, kind of talk about a bunch of use cases, right? But before I do, uh, uh, integration of Philo and 12 Labs essentially, you know, kind of brings all these capabilities onto the table, right? So A, there is logo detection, uh, you have the capability to do audio as well as video analysis. You can detect specific products. Uh, you have the ability to, you know, kind of fetch content using Philo's APIs. Uh, there's hashtag and keyword tracking. And then there's also trend detection. Uh, one of the very basic use cases that, you know, we've, you know, kind of managed to solve with uh, Philo and 12 Labs is a AI powered visual search where you can, you know, kind of build a cache of content repository and then use, um, you know, 12 labs ability to search through videos. So I could say, Hey, give me, um, you know, kind of list of all the people who've been using Sephora products in the last seven weeks. Uh, and this could be, you know, a preclude or a post hoc. uh, after let's say I've run a campaign, right. I've done an influencer campaign and want to understand, uh, whether, you know, my campaign has created organic buzz around my product. Uh, and instead of, you know, kind of giving or outsourcing it to an agency, I can, you know, kind of start searching, uh, you know, these cache of results and figure out if our influences have been organically started talking about, uh, you know, Sephora products. Uh, uh, the next use case we have is social listening, uh, where you can, you know, kind of uh, look at the internet and try and figure, figure out if there are insights that you can draw uh, uh, from, from, from that, for example, you could, you know, kind of say, Hey, um, have people been talking about the latest product launch that we've been doing or have people, you know, kind of started talking about our competitors more, or is the mention, you know, more about us when, you know, kind of, um, uh, when an unboxing video is done, right. Uh, similarly, you could go ahead and, you know, kind of try and make insights about what kind of, uh, focus has been. Uh, in a in an unboxing video or any videos that have been done by the influencers, is it has the focus more been on the brand or has it been more on the product itself? Uh, you also have the ability where you can you know kind of identify uh, specific insights around you know um, the number of times people have been talking about your product. So you could you know kind of say hey Sephora and uh, we could give you back an insight where we say hey hundred plus influencers have been using, let's say, MAC cosmetics, but nobody has been using Sephora. So whatever spend you're doing in the influencer marketing space, they're actually not giving you, you know, um, value for your buck, simply because people have been, you know, kind of focusing on MAC products and not on Sephora products. Uh, one of the most interesting use cases that we've also seen uh, has emerged from e-commerce, where um, there is a huge push towards video commerce. People want to, you know, kind of uh, look at a product uh, and see someone um, who they can relate to, you know, kind of use that product in real life. I've just tried to, you know, kind of pick up a snippet from Olaplex, uh, which is, you know, kind of done this beautifully. They get um, organic content from social platforms and plug that onto their website. Um, this content is majorly, you know, um, creators, individual influencers using their product and giving uh, real-time feedback about the various aspects of the product, right? So we are, you know, kind of able to fetch all of this content from social platforms and then use the 12 Labs APIs to specifically isolate content, uh, you know, timelines where uh, an influencer or creator has spoken about a particular product. Uh, the second use case that we've, you know, kind of found out was that um, a lot of brands um, and let's say gaming brands or a lot of uh, e-commerce brands do longer term streams with influencers, right? Where uh, an influencer comes and, you know, kind of does a stream for about hour, two hours, or even four hours, where they demonstrate a lot of products. Now, essentially, once the stream has, you know, kind of uh, finished, 
that content item you know kind of goes out of use but we've been able to you know kind of help them repurpose all of this content simply because you can you know kind of search for a particular product isolate that snippet uh, from the entire video and then repurpose it as you know a short video uh, and then last uh, use case that i have on hand is you know around e-commerce where there's a lot of catalog and category management that individuals have to do um, and a lot of this catalog and category management requires them to pick up insights from, you know, outside the world because uh, essentially, let's say if blue as a color has, you know, kind of taken up uh, for a particular kind of apparel, uh, people want to, you know, now start manufacturing a lot of um, similar color clothes because that's in the trend, right? Uh, so what we were able to do was we were able to, you know, kind of identify insights from um, social videos and advise the e-commerce brand on what kind of colors uh, should their latest catalog feature, right? Uh, and how we did this was, you know, kind of um, use Philo's APIs to create a cache of content around kids' bags, um, kids' clothing, and then use 12 labs to figure out uh, what kind of color coding or coloring scheme was predominantly dominant um, within those videos, right? And then come back to the client and say, hey, uh, according to us, these are the three major coloring schemes that have, you know, kind of worked well. Um, and, you know, uh, the e-commerce giant actually agreed to, you know, kind of remodel their um, coloring schema according to what we advised. And they saw a roughly about 10% uh, jump in their overall sales, right? Uh, which essentially means that, uh, in today's world, you no longer need to, you know, kind of conduct offline surveys. All of the insights are available on digital platforms and, um, you know, integration between Philo and 12 Labs essentially allows you to, uh, you know, kind of get those insights without having to, you know, kind of go out uh, in the outside world and, you know, kind of reach out to people and then try and see if you can get access. All the insights from social platforms are just available um, you know, in a couple of clicks uh, with Philo and 12 Labs integration. Um, so yeah, I think that's just, uh, you know, kind of me and I'll probably stop here uh, and see if I have uh, any questions that people would want me to take up. Great. Um, thanks, Ronnie. Um, thanks for going over the streamer demo and, you know, some interesting use cases that, um, that, that can be achieved by, you know, this new integration. Um, yeah, uh, for the audience, um, do you have any question for, for on it? If, if you do, uh, please, please raise your hand and you, I can unmute you. Or you can put it in the Zoom chat, either way it works. Yeah, so I, I don't see any, actually this one right here. Um, okay, so I would have a question. He sent it to me actually, so I should I send it to everyone in the meeting as well. Um, Ronnie, do you wanna answer the most recent question by Ray? What does it cost to do insights with video for social media campaign example that you show up? Sure. Uh, so essentially, you know, uh, okay, I've got a couple of questions. I'll probably take up Ray's question first. Yep. Uh, the cost essentially, you know, kind of is a factor of uh, the volume uh, and the kind of uh, insights that you want to draw. Uh, majorly, you know, uh, we've seen cost range from anywhere uh, between, you know, 30 cent per video analysis to, uh, you know, as low as about 15 cents, uh, simply because of, you know, the difference in volume, the kind of analysis and insights that you wanted to draw. Um, so very subjective uh, uh, answer to that. Uh, but in case if you have a specific use case, uh, happy to, you know, kind of uh, do a more detailed, you know, kind of chat and, uh, you know, kind of give you a more realistic estimate of sorts. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Ray. 
Uh, I have a question from Elder, uh, which is what content do I need to have available if it searches for content on social media? How much does it cover? Um, so you don't need to have any content available. Uh, you just need a specific, um, you know, query uh, ready with you, which means that you need to know exactly what kind of um, keyword or a hashtag you want to be searching about. And by the way, you just can't search about one. You can search about multiple keywords. So you could say, hey, give me content around um, Zara, Hamleys, uh, H&M, and we can, you know, kind of fetch all the content that's available on social platforms. Uh, what it is going to cover is that it's going to cover six major platforms. So uh, we cover Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn, uh, X, and Facebook. So across all these six platforms, we will go and, you know, kind of look for these uh, specific content items. And then we'll come back and create a cash in and, and give it to you. Right. Yeah, there's another comment from Ray. Uh got it. Yeah, right. So uh, you want to, you know, kind of draw insights uh on trending topics. <laughs> um yeah, so again, uh I probably want to, you know, kind of uh, do a little detailed uh, understanding. Uh, I'm happy to, you know, kind of drop my email ID here. And if you can, you know, kind of uh, drop a note, uh, we could chat about it. It is uh, actual, uh, it's actually a good uh, and an interesting use case simply because, you know, we also run a podcast of our own. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a guy called Shubham Tiwari uh, who's also attending the webinar uh, and a huge shout out to him. He keeps on, you know, kind of using... Uh, the current integration to, you know, kind of uh, draw the insights that you're talking about. So I'll probably also pull him in uh, so that, you know, he can share more about uh, the way he utilizes our integration, but that's definitely a use case that we've seen. Right. Yeah. So already do a thumbs up. Um, yeah, Ronnie. Uh... Any other presentation material that you have, or is, is that the end of the? Yeah, that's the that's the end. I didn't want to, you know, kind of uh, bore people a lot on a Friday. Just wanted to keep it short and sweet. Uh, just share the information that's required. Uh, okay. Um. Sounds great. Um. So when working with the twelve apps. Platform with you and cause of any challenges? Like, um, yeah. Honestly, mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of challenges. What we've, you know, kind of though experienced is that uh, it's become, uh, it's actually opened actually a lot of, a plethora of, a lot of opportunities for us. Mm -hmm. uh, simply because uh, we had the capability to, you know, kind of create uh, a mini social platform uh, of sorts for a lot of our clients, right? Uh, but I think what we lacked in all essentiality was the ability to, you know, kind of give them uh, that power to search, right? Uh, yeah. A lot of times we had, you know, kind of uh, clients depend on the metadata that was associated with a particular content item. But then uh, after multiple, you know, kind of attempts with different set of clients, what we realized was that this metadata uh, sometimes was not giving the accurate uh, and the real story, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what 12 Labs essentially allowed us to do was, you know, uh, give clients the ability to draw actual insights because now this was coming in from video, right? And um, like I said before, and I'll probably stress again, uh, we are increasingly seeing, uh, you know, a trend where people are adopting the likes of Instagram um, and snap or probably even youtube for that matter uh right mm -hmm. uh simply because the generation uh or people today in today's time want to communicate more through a video or an image right yep. text uh text based social platforms essentially are seeing a decline right uh facebook is seeing massive challenges in you know kind of showing uh increase in subscribers they're also seeing a lot of challenge in retaining subscribers uh, and because a lot of people are moving towards video and image, a lot of the insights are going to come from that, right? And the existing social listening tools uh, 
and and taking no pot shots, right? Uh, the likes of food suite or a sprinkler today majorly depend on text, right? So what it essentially results into for a marketeer is that they're going to get insights, but they might not be the most accurate insights. They might end up skipping a major segment of people because uh, they're not this this segment of person people are not creating content using uh text right so what i foresee right and uh, and that's uh, that's also putting it out there is that uh, using our capabilities there is a high chance someone can go ahead and build a video social listening tool of their own right which would essentially allow you to you know kind of read videos understand videos and then draw insights uh and 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 in the next uh, five years or so, I essentially see all these current social listening tools, uh, you know, kind of changing stance and migrating to uh, more of a video or an image first approach. Mm -hmm. uh, people are, you know, kind of taking that attempt, uh, they're taking that, you know, approach. But honestly, you'd, you know, kind of need a little more nuanced approach uh, rather than probably, you know, utilizing uh, open source solutions, right? Uh, so, so I think that's that's one of the interesting use cases. And just one more point that I probably want to add is that um, one of the things that we really liked about 12 Labs was the fact that it was not just search on top of uh, a specific content item, right? It was more contextual search. And I remember, um, you know, I had a conversation uh, way back, uh, I think with you, uh, uh, I think uh, I probably, re I just probably finished this point and pick up your question. Uh, but but I think I had a question, I had a discussion with James uh, uh, where I wanted to, you know, kind of understand if it was just pure search, right? Because at that time I was more, uh, I was more in the exploratory mode. Uh, and what I essentially thought was that, hey, if it's just a search product, right? I could go ahead and build it on my own. I wouldn't need, you know, a provider like 12 labs. But then I think incrementally what I've come to realize is that it's not search, it's contextual search, right? Where I can, you know, kind of go and give it a query which says, hey, give me, you know, women who are using a hand care product, right? Uh, or who are using a specific product on a specific part of the body. And it can essentially, you know, kind of look at the video, understand the context, and then give me back the result, which is what, you know, kind of, makes the entire difference. And that's 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 the ability that allows marketeers according to me, or that will allow marketeers to, you know, kind of get more distilled insights that they can then factor it uh, back into their product. Uh, I'll probably pause and see if uh, Ray has a question. Yeah, I think my question was more on uh, the model. So like if, uh, like the use cases would just be like gestures. So if our people are, are moving in a certain way, can you get that information from it? Like without, you know, like, is there like the famous example is a guy um, who posts TikTok videos and all he does is like these weird expressions, like, you know, and so can you actually, um, like he says a lot without saying a lot and does, can you get insights out of that? Because um, he transcends language uh, and like, he's very popular in all these different languages. And so there are other people who are like that, uh, who I want to draw insights from, like to, you know, like reactions we'll see and can it tell you like a positive reaction i'm not really i haven't really interacted closely with the model uh and, and, and like can i get like insights and something like this is a positive thing or this is they're sad or they're angry or their you know reaction exists or something over a period of time yeah um they're only tell try it at all or like you know none audio uh unfortunately i haven't given that a shot uh simply because my insights are more uh, related to you know a specific product or a specific kind of trend emerging from videos uh yep. but haven't given that a shot great um yeah so i, I can uh, i think your, your question raised about well, like capabilities of the model so uh i think we um, so we build this the, the model when we build it, like it, it can capture like all the different modalities within the video, right? So there's the visual elements, there's the audio elements. We can include both conversation 
and audio signal, and then there is a text element. So if that, you know, video doesn't have any like audio wisdom for like a, a silent movie, right? Then it will rely everything on the what what is seen on the screen, right? Um, and yeah, like I, I think it did a really good job of like capturing emotions, uh, motion, um, activities, and, and any type of video with like high high speed, like high velocity that happening. Um, and so I think to to use cases like emotion recognition, sentiment analysis, those, those kind of tasks, I think the model can do a really good job at like, like and, and you can even like input like complex query, you know, that like mix different emotion together and you will return all the the output that um, match what you search for. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. Great. Awesome. Um All right, I don't see any other question in the chat. So, oh, so Nick got a question right here. Uh, Ronit, do you, uh, you want to take this one? Uh, let me unmute you real quick. Thank you, James. Um, so Nick, uh we basically um you know kind of um for certain uh platforms we have the capability to go um from a look back perspective as long as you'd want us to go uh which is let's say on an instagram if there are ten thousand posts we can actually fetch all the ten thousand posts that are associated with a specific mention uh but on a platform like let's say linkedin uh the limit is only 600 right uh whereas if you uh, look at uh, some somebody some something like a TikTok uh, that has a limit of about five thousand in real time. Uh, so I I'm happy to you know kind of uh, give you a, a platform wise breakdown of the capability that we have. Uh, again, I you know drop my email address in the chat. You can you know kind of uh, drop me a note and I can you know kind of forward. But um, Outside of the limitations, whatever capability, whatever number of posts, you know, kind of fit within that limitation, we're going to fetch and, you know, kind of uh, get all of that. Uh, and we, you know, kind of essentially work with about 21 plus vendors in the back end. So there are absolutely, you know, 0% chances of uh, any search results, you know, kind of uh, giving you inaccurate results because we, you know, kind of fetch content from multiple vendors, normalize all of those results and then give it... Uh, uh, or serve it to you, right? So uh, you'll see absolutely no um, inaccuracies there. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Um, okay, I, I'll give you another two minutes if there's, there's no more question, then we can... Uh... Closed out the webinar early. Um, yeah, in the meantime, I think we are super excited for, for this partnership between Twilight Labs and Philo, and we definitely hope to do a bit more uh, engagement. Uh, you know, I think we can view more use cases and, you know, uh, demonstrate some of the, you know, examples you share in the slide in, in a like practical like, example application, tutorials, et cetera. Um, I think, yeah, the creator economy definitely requires a lot of. Uh, innovation so uh yeah super excited to see how how this uh how the tech you know this this to the next level sure sure uh, and you know we've got uh, uh for anybody who signs up uh let's say using uh who comes through you know let's say 12 labs we will you know kind of extend uh you know a, some amount of free credit so that you can you know they can you know kind of uh explore our around our apis and uh, I honestly feel that, you know, um, once something like this gets exposed to the developer community, uh, there are a whole bunch of use cases that are going to emerge simply because as an organization, you can, you know, kind of only take a couple of bets and then focus on that. Uh, but when you expose, you know, mm -hmm. uh, your products or a partnership like this to the external community, uh, there are a lot of use cases that people can think of. And I'm pretty sure, and, I, and I'm pretty confident that, um, you know, we're going to see, uh, you know, use cases emerge. Uh, we're happy to, you know, kind of uh, 
collaborate with developers who are you know kind of specifically building around a use case um, and you know kind of support them from uh, you know let's say a tech standpoint or uh, even from you know kind of enabling them uh, in the right direction so that you know they can build uh, but definitely I, you know kind of like i said uh, once something like this gets exposed to the developer community i foresee a lot of interesting use cases uh, coming to light absolutely yeah, I think that's that's the whole idea that why we want to do this because um, uh, yeah, just just serve as inspiration to demonstrate the visibility of, of the two platform and so that you know people can do things interesting things on top on top of it. Yeah. Awesome. So I didn't see any uh, uh, question in the chat. So I think yeah, I think we can close out the webinar a bit early. Uh, give everyone back you know uh, the Friday or the weekend. Uh, yeah, the session will be up. Uh, the recording of the session will be available on YouTube. Um, probably within uh, you know four or five weeks, and so I'll be sure to share that with uh, Ronnie, so we can share it with the Filo community. And yeah, uh, for our attendees, we run this webinar series on a weekly basis every Friday. So stay tuned. I'll follow to our labs, and uh, yeah, hope to see you in the future session. Thank you, everyone. Sebastian, thank you. Cheers. Happy Friday, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye.